So I'm out on another little adventure today. Believe it or not, I've got a new tent to test out. What a day. Absolutely stunning. As you can probably tell, it's a little bit breezy. So it'll be a really good test for the tent. So I was really impressed when I first saw this tent set up in the showroom. It's got some great features on it that I know that a lot of wild campers, including myself, have been asking for. But I still think it could be made even better. So we'll find somewhere to pitch up and then me and you will take a look around and then we'll come up with a wish list of all the things that we want to make the perfect one-man tent. And then hopefully some of the manufacturers will take notice and give us what we want. So I don't know if it's because of the amount of rain that we've had, but the Peak District is looking absolutely lush at the minute. I've come down there before, but there's like yeah, a little camp, rabbit warren or something now. Yeah. It's gorgeous, isn't it? So this is one of my go-to spots when I want to test a bit of gear. It's only a four or five mile walk in, but it's far enough out of the way to normally get a bit of peace. Got quite a few different bits of kit to show you today. Had some of it quite a while, just not shown it you before. This pack, I've had it months. Four Claz, I don't even know what it is to be honest. MT900 Ultralight, 50 plus 10. It's got some good features. That's the tent. Excited to try that out. All right, so this is the Terranova Laser Compact all season. Get it pitched up and then we'll have a look around. So there's a single pole tunnel tent with two poles at either end to give you that bit of extra room. So this is a nine millimeter Terra Nova reflex pole. If you want to go to the extreme, you can double pole this for extra strength. So at either end, there's a little pole. It fits in this sleeve. There we go. One on this end as well. And there's plenty of Dyneema guy lines. And these ones on the end give you the belts and braces. So the first thing we want as wild campers is for our tents to be robust. That's not going anywhere. And if you double pole this, it'll take a proper hammering. 
but that's not what's impressed me the most. Wait till you see inside. Just look how much room you get inside here. This is a true one-man tent. You know, most one-man tents, you can barely squeeze your, your sleeping pad in. This you can get a wide pad in, all of your gear in, a push. I think you can squeeze two people in here. In a minute, I'll get Andy to come and sit inside and have a lie down so you can see just how much room there is. I know a lot of you taller campers out there really struggle to to find a tent with plenty of room in it. Something like this just might be the answer. Yeah, just see what it's like for size for a one person tent. You're taller than me. What's that mud? Unless you've got a mat in, but I suppose. Decent headroom. Just lay down. Tons of room. Tons of room, isn't there? Yeah. How tall are you? Uh, I'm six foot one. I've got there six or eight inch and then... Yeah, there's probably five or six inches there and there's more at that end. Ten, twelve inches here, a foot or so. A bit less than a... Well, there's probably about eight inch there as well, but there's plenty of room. Plenty of room, isn't there? And then, look how much you've got at the side here. And that's inside the tent, so... Granted, this isn't the widest of vestibules, but there's still enough room to cook and to get your, it's long. So you could get your bag right down at that end or this end and then get your stove on here. I'm going to be cooking steak and asparagus in there in a bit. Yeah, it's, all money. it's a one man tent, but it's got a slash to, so you can. It's a, one of them one and a half. It's like a one and a half, five. but you know, people want a true one-man tent, don't they? Yeah. And it's pack where trail weight, as they call it, is under one and a half kilo. I think it's one seven summit with all the pegs and stuff. Yeah. I don't use the standard pegs with it. I'm going with Eastern pegs again. Um, they use their own Terra, Terra Nova, Terra Firma, I think they're called. Uh, them, uh, v -shape, you know, them yeah, Y-shape kind of things, a bit like MSR ground dogs. Yeah, palace for one person, that. <laughs> New pillar. Bit of luxury. So we're going to have a dabble with the Outkit Whisper Pad today. I've enjoyed using this so far. Loads of room on it. It's comfortable. It's a bit bulky, but comfortable and warm. I bought my little flex tail pump stroke lantern. I'm going to show you how quick it is to inflate using the bag that comes with the sleeping pad. I'll spare you the details and tell you how many bagfuls. 12 bagfuls and that's up enough for me to be comfortable on. Right, so a wide pad and then you've still got that much space at the side. My muscular forearms worth of space. I've shoved the pad up to the top and then we've got probably muscular forearm to the bottom again so sticking with the out kit theme i've got the pipe dream 400 sleeping bag and that is going to be home for the night so i seem to have caught my jacket on something needs to do a little repair so this is tenacious tape got my little next tool is it nexi tool a great bit of kit. 
It's got um, scissors, pliers, knife, all that kind of stuff. So I'm not 100% sure if this will work on me down jacket, but it's better than nothing. I cut a little square out. Gonna make sure that the corners are rounded off. We don't want a huge patch on my jacket. Keep that, take it down with me. Not perfect, but it'll stop all the down coming out of there. Here's what it is. There we go. Backpack fits down there okay. And some space down here for all my rubbish. Not had the sunset yet, but it's just hiding behind that cloud. So that trig that you might be able to see at the top there, that's back to it's actually an ethyl. I hadn't planned on bagging any today, but in fact, I'll go up and get it in the morning. Tonight, I'm just gonna chill out and have a beer and some steak. Cheers. See, it's the little things that make tents better. You know, you get these saggy, things for the doors. You can adjust this one, look. So you can make sure it's really tight. Much better. I was gonna cook inside the tent, but may as well use the kitchen facilities. All right, so we have got a bit of Tesco finest fillet steak, asparagus, some shrooms. I got some steak seasoning in the end. I just season everything with this these days. Even my veggies. That is definitely up there with a the pot noodle. Right, that's about done. Forgot my plate. Just gonna let the steak rest in the pan. They are amazing. It's nice to push the boat out every now and again. Alright, I don't want to cut my pan, so I'm putting my spatula underneath. So I'm quitting onto the spatula and not the pan. Look at that, still a little tiny bit rare in the middle. Oh yeah. Look at that. Like Gordon Ramsay, but without the swearing. Or oh, hair. Yeah. I'll bring you back when I bet this. I'm wishing I'd brought some bread and butter. Knock that up. The 
Zandy's cosy little setup. MLD cricket. It's got the inner fitted to it as well. And then doing some uh, <laughs> bland fire pot chili con carne. Very nice. <laughs> if anybody asks, you can't get storming Norman cones anymore. Unless you find one on eBay. Are you going to be using this in the winter? I don't know, I might do. I said I was going to get a, a go last year and never did. I just I just sort of never got down to it, but I might get a go. Obviously, I'm just dinner in it and obviously I'll have, <coughs> have my bigger sleeping bag. Oh dear. Should have stuck to the path. So another cool feature of this tent is it's got a full solid in there but you can open things out. There's toggles on here to roll it up if you want to. I'm not going to bother. There's big vents at both ends as well and in hindsight I thought the vestibule was a little on the small side but there's actually plenty of room in there. More than in a lot of tents that I've got. The Jetborn Minimo base makes a cracking little table for my mug. I've been really struggling to get a comfy pillow, so I'm trying the Sierra Designs one. Can't remember what it's called now. Something down. It's not quite as thick as I want, so. You can stick something else in there, so I'm gonna inflate my other um, pillow in there and see if it buffs it up a bit. There we go, best of both worlds. Inflated and soft. All right, I'm gonna get my head down. In the morning we'll see how all of this gear is fed and then we'll put our tent wish list together. Good morning. Ten to six. Not a bad kip at all. There's no condensation on the inner, which is good. The two longer struts at the end of the tent mean you've got plenty of space at the ends as well, so you've not got the material bashing in your face. I took this out. <laughs> it was like trying to sleep on a waterbed. Got my little mesh bag with my hat and stuff in. That just propped me up a little bit. Very comfy. Toasty warm in the pipe dream. You might be able to see I had everything really well ventilated last night. Let's have a look. Good airflow through there, look. Closed that side up this morning. So I opened up the sleeping bag, used it as a quilt. Old habits die hard, don't they? The whisper pad though, very good. Much quieter than my Therma Rest, and I'm going to push the boat out and say it's more comfortable than my Therma Rest as well, although it isn't as warm. Um, it was about seven degrees, I think, last night. That was on the forecast, anyway. 
Uh, it wasn't cold or anything, but it's one of them. The thermorest, the extherm, you just feel the heat radiating back here. You don't with this, but it's 150 pound cheaper, so you decide. Makes a nice change having plenty of room to get dressed as well. So there's a bit of condensation on the fly. I'm going to add that to my tent wish list. Although physics doesn't really allow for it, does it? You're going to get it on tents no matter what. If it's colder outside than it is in the tent and you've got a little bit of moisture in the air, you're going to get it. That's what cloths are for though, isn't it? Too bad. Looks like it's been raining. We did get forecast a little bit. So there's two decent sized pockets in this tent. Um, got plenty of stuff in there. There's one at this end of the tent, and there's one at the back there. But there's no pockets on this side. I'd quite like to see a few more pockets in tents. Give you more storage options and i quite like these ones where you get a little storage at the top as well sometimes just putting your headlamp in there acts as a lantern for the tent these little loops although they do a job sometimes it's fiddly when your hands are cold so the next thing that i'm going to add to my wish list is a couple more pockets now this is just going to be my wish list by the way um Everybody's different. They've all got different needs and preferences when it comes to a tent. So you're not going to have one that caters for everybody's needs, but it's nice to be able to, if you don't go camping all of the time, to have one tent that will do you pretty much all year round in most situations anyway. Now this is a true one-man tent. There's me, plenty of room for my gear inside, rucksack outside as well, so um vestibule space so i can cook in there which i'm gonna get a brew going this morning but i'm gonna see if we can get a sunrise first good ventilation and there's room at either end so you you've not got tent material in your face so i'm crouching a little bit but i can kneel up as well so if it's chucking it down in a bit i'm gonna be able to pack my bag whilst being protected from the elements inside the tent you can't do that in these little tiny bivvy style tents that I like to use. Bit of rain still on the tent. <laughs> That's going to be added to my wish list as well. That all tents come out of the factory waterproof. So it doesn't affect this particular one, but some tents you've got to seam seal them yourself. Um, so all of these edges you'd have to go around with some kind of silicon. I get why they do it, to keep the costs down, because to seam seal a tent, you've got to pitch them, you've got to add the sealant and then let it dry. And that's a really expensive part of the process. And these lightweight shelters, you want to get them as cheap as possible. <laughs> Look at those colors. I'm running before the clag gets in the way. Beautiful. All right, isn't it? I'll send you that. Thank you. A bit windy, mind. Worth setting the alarm for. I'm 
I'm gonna bag an Ethel. Back tour, another one in the bag. Although I might get blown off here in a minute. You can just see the tent poking out. Doors open, I've got plenty of ventilation, but if I needed to, you know, there is room to climb inside the tent and put my stove here without being anywhere near my fly sheet. Being able to make a brew or cook my dinner inside my tent is something that I want on my wish list, especially if I'm using the same tent in all conditions. There's a two way zip up here as well, so you can ventilate from the top. You've already seen there's plenty of ventilation at the ends of the tent. Just going back to the waterproofing, I also think the minimum you really want is 3,000 millimeters on the hydrostatic head. So technically, uh, 1,500 millimeters is classed as waterproof, but if you're getting a, a pounding in heavy downpours all the time, the greater the number, the, the better. Got it all this morning, even though a rainbow, what's left of it. So the wind picked up a little bit through the night, still a bit breezy this morning. As with pretty much all tunnel tents that I've used, this did flap a little bit. Wasn't too bad, but I did need to put my earplugs in. That's something that I need to do most camps nowadays though. Yeah, so we'll add quiet materials non-flappy tents to the wish list, shall we? Probably getting a bit greedy now though. So what have we got so far? The biggest thing for me is a one-man tent can comfortably fit one man and all of his gear. So to be able to sit up and be plenty long enough for, for people of all shapes and sizes. I get that they struggle to cater for you if you're seven foot tall, but, but most one-man tents, you struggle to fit somebody in over six foot. We want it to be fully waterproof, pretty storm resistant. So waterproof seams and plenty of going out points. Room at either end of the tent as well. So you are not got your tent material in your face. A decent sized vestibule for storing your gear and doing a little bit of cooking in if need be. So good ventilation, which we've got on this tent. We'd like it to be condensation proof. Unlikely, but that's what we really want. We want the tent to be as light as possible. However, sometimes I think for an extra 100, 200 grams, I'd rather carry that and have the additional space. Decent sized entrance. Plenty of pockets. Give me more pockets. A decent height bathtub floor. We don't want water getting in the bottom of our tent. Oh, I'd like the inner and outer to be connected. So it doesn't have that on this tent. You've got to just put two bungees around one tent peg. Um, I much prefer the little clips where the inner and outer are together, but I'm guessing they've done that to save a little bit of weight. But it's going on my wish list. So I don't want the inner to be too saggy. So some towing over tents in the past have been really saggy. This one's quite tall. 
not a big deal, but I think it just looks better and gives you the maximum amount of space. So the AS stands for all season. I'd like to be able to use a tent in all seasons. It's nice to have the solid inner for the colder months and then be able to unzip it a little bit to give you some mesh for the warmer months. Although you can get away with just a full mesh inner all year round. Just another nice to have. Go on then, we'll add temp pegs to the list. I use, that's an Eastern Backpacker 9 inch and the Eastern Nano 6 inch. The temp pegs that come with a lot of tents, even some premium ones, I think are pretty rubbish. The ones that come with this are the Terra Firma. They're not too bad, but I still don't really get on with them too well. They're quite sharp and I find that these Eastern pegs, they work in almost all conditions, barring snow where you have to tweak them a little bit, unless you can get it into the ground. Yep, give me some decent temp pegs. What else? Poles. I like the fact that um, Hilleberg, they give you a spare little pole section. Be nice if all manufacturers did that. I know it will add to the cost. I'm not too fussed about the tent being fully freestanding because that does require that you have you know, additional poles and it makes the whole thing heavier. Although it does give you better pitching options. But I definitely want poles that are going to be able to stand a little bit of flex and wind force. So while I'm pushing the boat out, I'm going to choose a premium material as well. Something that is really strong and got high tear resistance. Not all ripstop nylon is equal. Some of the really cheap ones, they tear almost as easy as paper. You try tearing Hilleberg material with your bare hands. You need to be Jeff Capes. Guy lines as well. I hate those really thick, cheap ones that, that fray quite a lot. And the, the line locks. Um, I do like this sort of line lock. You get some that are just like a little plastic thing with three holes in. <laughs> They're horrible. Cheap and nasty. It wouldn't cost much more to put these sort of things on everything. Zips. Want a zip that you can do with one hand. And it to be fairly easy to do in cold weather. Again, personal preference. I would like to have a double skin tent. Just gives you that little bit more protection from condensation. These little eyelets that your poles fit into. I actually prefer a reinforced sleeve. A sleeve's much easier to get poles in and out of. Again, especially when you've got cold hands. The tarp tent Scarp 1, that's also quite a big tent for one person. And they've got like a little adjuster on here. So you can slide your inner in a little bit if you want to have a larger vestibule while you cook. And then you just slide it back again when you've done. That'd be a nice little feature to have. It gives you a few more options. If you could have some sort of rig in there where you can lift that bit up to give you a bit more ventilation when the weather's really nice. Um, I think the Scarp again has got something like that. Yeah, I mean, Scarp had some great features. I just thought that it was let down by some of the finish of it. And tiny little pockets that your poles had to fit into and the, the way the crossing poles fit just wasn't what I wanted. It's been a cracking little camp and I do love this tent. I'm gonna stick my neck out and say it's the best one person tent that I've come across this year. I'm basing that on all season UK use. It's not perfect, like I would like those to be connected, but it's not a big deal. It's really easy to do still. The rest of the tents connected up together. But the space inside will fit almost everybody. It is a palace in there. This is the kind of tent you want in those cold winter months when you're spending 12, 14 hours stuck in a tent. So I don't reckon that's a bad little wish list. However, I want all of those things for cheaper, for less money. So this is one of Terra Nova's more premium tents. And they do make cheaper versions under the Wild Country brand, where the materials may be 
aren't quite as advanced, but I like to see most of those features available on tents at different budgets, even if that means slightly less technical materials. Not everyone's got this kind of money to drop on a tent, and I think a few cheaper priced options would make the hobby more accessible to more people. Right, waste time wiping that tent down, wasn't it? I'm gonna get in here and pack this stuff away. Waterproof socks. These are a game changer. Only one job left. Drop the tent. So what do you think of my wish list for the, we'll call it the ultimate one man tent for UK wild camping. Is there anything that you think I've missed or anything that you'd like to see? Mm. Me personally, I think the laser compact all season ticks a lot of boxes, but everything can always be a little bit better. Anyway, I will leave links in the description below to everything that I've used today, including the tent. I've also got a few discount codes for you as well, which might save you a few quid. Did forget to mention on my list, needs to be easy to pitch, and this is pretty easy to pitch. One pole in the middle, two at either end, and then just stake it out. And even packing away in the wind, it's pretty easy. Just leave some of the guy lines in so it's not going to blow anywhere. The ground's dry underneath where I pitched. Winner. Don't think I mentioned it. Pack size. The tent needs to be able to pack down really small for me. I want it to be able to go in my backpack that way. I don't like these ones that are, are really long. That's why I'm struggling a bit with the, the DCF tent. It's more of a ball ache to get it in your pack. Where was this? And just shove it in. No bother at all. I don't expect it, but it'd be nice to see one or two manufacturers jump in the comments to hear their thoughts on why they design tents a certain way. I get that they design different tents for different situations, whether that be lightweight backpacking or winter heavy snow camping but i reckon most people just want one tent that will do most situations and there's some that are pretty good and we'll do that but they could always be better anyway handy's just got to drop his cricket and then we're getting off the hill so that's it for this one thanks for watching and i'll see you next time <laughs>